Good morning once in-house and good morning to those that are watching us on live right now. Um, this morning, we're going to shift to something else. We're just going to worship in our prayer. We're going to worship in our declaring over our lives. Um, I'm going to read a, a scripture to you um, from Philippians 3, 13 through 14. And it's the Passion Version. And I want you to just declare this over your life. Again, it's Philippians 3, 13 through 14. It's the Passion Version. It says, um, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future. Instead, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Through the anointing of Jesus. And you will hear music in the background um, just so that we can have our minds set on him That's and focus fine. on him and not focus on what's around us. But as the word is saying, we're going to focus and we're going to reach our heavenly goal and gain the victory prize. Through the anointing of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this time, wherever you are, you're just going to raise your hands. We're going to declare over our lives. Um, just forget about everything that happened this week. Forget about everything that you have seen on your phone. Everything that you've seen on the TV. Everything that your friend has told you or gossiped to you or vented to you or threw up on you. Forget everything that you have tried to fight through in the middle of the night. Forget about those things and focus on the one who came down to this world and fought for you. Focus on the one who came down to this world to fight for you. God, we thank you. Thank you, God, we thank you that you sent your son to come down to fight for us, thank to you, sacrifice his life for us. Thank God, we thank you that we choose this morning, Lord, to focus on you and focus on your word. God, we choose to hold your hand. We choose to trust you. Even if you don't feel like you have been trusting him or obeying him, this morning I want you to declare that over your life. I choose to trust him. I choose to obey him. I choose to listen to his voice. Choose to listen to your voice. Make that declaration over your life. I choose to read his word daily. Even when I don't feel like it. Trust me, we don't feel like it when God's like, oh, wake up this morning early, early and read his words. Sometimes, to be honest, we don't. But you know what? It's the aftermath of it. It's the joy and the victory and the yes. peace and the refuge that you feel. Yes. This morning, we're going to pray for the people that are connected to Ewall. We're going to pray for the people that are watching online. We're going to pray for our world. Because the enemy is fighting hard this season, this year. And it's a joke saying, like, oh, my gosh, this year is just going so long. Oh, my gosh. But what are you doing in this year? What are you doing in this year? Remind me of Joshua, not Joshua, Joseph, when the Pharaoh had the dreams and the dreams and he didn't know what to do and the, he saw the seven dead cows, the seven live cows, all these things. And God warned him about them, but jo Joseph came with clarity and understanding, saying that this is what you need to do, because famine is coming. This is what you need to do, because famine is coming. And I feel like God has been speaking to a lot of you guys and in your spirit, saying this is what you need to do, but you've been ignoring him and wondering why you're facing these things. So Lord, right now I ask you to touch every person that is watching, every person that is connected to Ewald, Every person that just so happened to be clicking on the Ewalt page, Lord God, touch their hearts, touch their minds, Lord. Lift them up, Jesus. For you have the final say, God. You have the final say, Lord. All of you surround them, Jesus. Surround their minds, surround their ears, surround their eyes, Lord. Surround their hearts, God. Right now, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Enemy, you have no place in their home. Enemy, you have no place in their mind. Enemy, you have no place over their spouses, over their children, over their finances, over their health. Enemy, you have no place. But we have authority over you, says the word. For God, you will never leave us nor forsake us. For you have promised and you will walk with us every step of the way. God, I pray that they choose to believe this morning. I pray that they choose to believe this morning. You have the power and the authority. 
authority that is placed inside of you. God breathed that air into you. He breathed that into you. It's funny because I was talking with Minister Shawan this morning how the enemy would try any and everything to get us off, off track. Mm -hmm. But we looked at each other and we were like, but that just made us stronger. Yeah, yeah. That made us want to chase God more. Because yeah. the more I chase it, the more I know what to say to the enemy. Yeah. The more I chase it, I know what worship I can do. My worship, my praise, every breath that I have brings me the Lord. I know what to do when those things happen. I know how to go deeper. Jesus, find a place in your home. Make it an altar before the Lord. Lay before the Lord right now. Kneel down. If you can't hear the worship music, put on your own worship music. But listen, take heed to his voice. The words that let our goal be to reach Jesus. Not let our goal to make it through the next day. Not let our goal be, let me get the children out on time. Not our goal to wake up in the morning and get some coffee, like, okay, here we go again. Make it your goal to reach Jesus. Because when you reach Jesus, everything lines up. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You didn't click on here by mistake. Yes. God knew exactly where you're at. Yes. He knew what you needed to hear this morning. Thank you, Father. On this morning, we just felt a, a tug on our hearts where there's a people that's crying out. And I know that you feel there's a need. And God is saying, I am that need. Yes. You need me. Yes. You need my word. Yes. This morning I laid before God. And of all the things that I could look in the natural and say what I needed, mm -hmm. what came out of my mouth was, God, I need you. Yes. Lord, yes. I need you. Yes. I need your peace. Mm -hmm. I need your guidance, yes, and I need your strength. Yes. And there's some people today, I know you may think it's more money, or it's the spouse, or it's the for my kids to act right. God said, no, it's my peace. Yes. It's my guidance, and it's my strength. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, as I cried out to God, and then I got in the word, my devotion this morning, I just want to share with you yes. the three scriptures um, that came up in my devotion. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, yes. which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts yes. and minds through Christ Jesus. Yes. It's like, oh my God, I was just saying, God, I need your peace. And here in his word, he's saying, you have my peace. Yes. And then the next scripture, Psalms 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. I was like, oh my God, I was just coming to you saying, God, I need your guidance. Yes. And here he is in his word saying, I will guide you with my eye. Yes. And I'm here to tell you if you feel like you lost your way, God has not taken his eye off of you. Yes. He knows exactly where you are. Yes. He knows exactly where you need to be. Yes. And he says, I'm guiding you, daughter. Yes. I'm yes. guiding you, son. Yes. You have, I have not forsaken or left you. Yes. Know that I am your God. Know that I have given you my Holy Spirit to guide you. And the last scripture, Psalms 46 and 1, I read. God is our refuge and yes. strength. A very present help in trouble. Yes. Ooh, I said, God, I prayed and asked you for strength. And you told me right here in your word, I am your strength yes. in the time that you need me. Yes. So what that told me today was, God, I need your word. I yes. need you. Yes. I said, I realize that I can't live without you. Yes. But more, I realize I have everything I need. Yes. I already have. You already gave it to me. You just said, I just need to 
believe what you already have given to me. Yes. And I'm telling you, if you feel lost today, if you feel weak today, if you feel chaotic, God has said, I have already given you guidance. Mm -hmm. I've already given you strength. Yes. And I've already given you the peace. You just have to believe yes. you have it. Yes. It's what the, the story that you tell yourself, what you convince yourself of. And I'm here to tell you in God's word, if we believe what we have, it is so. Yeah. It is so. Yeah. You have the peace of God. Tap yes. into it. Yes. You have the strength of God. Yes. Tap into it. Yes. You have his guidance. You yes. have his help. Yes. Tap into it. God yes. just said, believe. Yes. Believe. Yes. Believe. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. So, God, right now, I just yes. pray, Father, over the hearts of your mind, of your of these people that yes. have come onto this page, that yes. have come into this building today. Yes, Lord. Father, I just speak your peace, God. Yes, Lord. Not a manufactured peace that we try to find through yes. things, Father. Yes. But there's nothing like yes. your peace. Your peace says it surpasses understanding. Yes. So I don't have to see it, yes. I don't have to understand it. Yes. But it's something that just comes over me and says, but I know and I know.
to start saying, God, I need you with your heart. Yes, that's it. And not with your lip service, because it's different when people give you lip service. Yes. Yeah. When they say stuff, well, I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to do that for you, and I'm here for you, call me anytime. But when you call them, they don't answer. When they text you, they don't answer. It's a good lip service. Yeah. But God is saying, I want your heart. Yes. 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 Yes, yes. yes God. And I hear yes, you in the spirit saying, I'm tired. He wants your heart. You keep saying, I'm tired of saying the same thing, of doing the same thing. God said, I'm shifting your mindset in the name of Jesus. I'm shifting your prayer life. I'm shifting your worship time. I'm shifting it because now it is time to go deeper. We have to start singing it with our heart, not because pastor said do it, not because Minister Shawanda said do it or the elder said do it or that's what we typically do. No, God is saying, I want your heart. Create in me a new heart, oh God. Create in me a new. Create in me a new. Because then your I need you, God, will change. The sound of it will change yeah. to his ears. Yes, yes. The I need strength will change yes. to his ears. Yes, yes. 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 The God I need more of you will change to his ears because now you understand that you have stepped in faith and I believe and that I walk by faith and not by sight and not by emotion, but I walk by faith. Yes, God. Because I'm walking by Lord faith God. when I know yes, that you hear me. Yes, Jesus. Create in me a new, a new, and we're praying this morning, I said, Lord, let them start over, a new, let's start over, and me and my husband, we joke around, because I always say, baby, on Monday, we got it, baby, on Monday, we gonna hit the gym, baby, on Monday, we not gonna eat no ice cream, because Lord knows I love ice cream. But we say Monday, 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 Monday comes, Monday goes, Monday comes, Monday goes. But right now, this is different. Creating me a new, a newness in this time that we are starting over. That our sound may be different. That our praise may be different. That our prayer may sound different. Because I'm telling you, it's just like a parent. My parents, they knew exactly what sound. When I wanted something, when I actually needed help. And when I just wanted to have my talkers on and talk, they knew the difference. They knew when it was time to, okay, we need to pray right now about it, or it's time like you have to make the decision. And this is the time you have to make the decision. It's a time where you have to choose to wake up in the morning and say, well, uh, good morning, Holy Spirit. God, thank you for your strength. God, I thank you that I, you are my refuge. That you have to make that decision. You have to make the decision to turn the noise off and turn up the worship. It's you that have to make that decision to get out of bed every morning to walk by faith. It's you now. Because God is a gentleman. He's not going to press on you. He's not going to throw these words down your feet. He said, make the decision today. As Mr. Shawana said, I need you, God. I need you, God. A new sound. You better grab it. Because the enemy is coming strong. The enemy is coming strong with the thoughts. The enemy is coming strong with the finances. The enemy is coming strong with the health. But you know who you are. Yes. You're God's child. Yes. And I was telling this morning, I said, you know what? Something the enemy will have us try to make us forget who we are. Mm -hmm. You don't rule over me. Yes. I rule over you. Right. You can roam this world, but I rule over you. Yes. And that's how we have to talk to the enemy. Yes. We can't sit there and let the enemy tell us what he wants. Yes. We talk to the enemy. I have power over you. Yes. Therefore, get thee behind me, Satan. Yes. You belong under my feet. The promises of God are yes and amen. Yes and amen. I choose to worship. I choose to praise. I choose to call on the name of Jesus when hard times come. I choose. It's time for you to choose. We can choose a healthy life while working out. We can choose to get a good car. We can choose to buy the nicest shoes. But when are we going to choose God and when are we going to choose a relationship with God that we should have? Just like the relationship you have with your friends and with your spouses and with your, with your boyfriends, whatever. You want to be, have something new and exciting. A new. A new. A new. 
God said, I'm tired of the same routine of you reading your little devotions every morning. Trust me, I know. I told myself, I got convicted. I was convicted of the thoughts that I was having in my heart. I'm like, that's not like me. That's not me. But I have to get back in position. I have to dance in the river of freedom. I have to dance in the river of victory. I have to make a choice. We have to make a choice. We talked about that this morning. We didn't want to wake up and just be like, oh, no, the ordinary day. No, we had to make the choice and say, God, I want something new. Yes. Yes. I want something new. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A new glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, God. Glory to God. Well, this was a new one today. It was yes. praise and worship. The praise and worship. The team leaders here saying to pray. Glory to God. And that's worshiping God. He's just praying. And uh, at this time, we're going to pray for our children. We said this is a day that we set aside to pray for our students, our staff, um, everyone, uh, the parents, uh, a part of the uh, students. And this year for Destiny Christian Academy, our theme this year is um, transformation. And we're believing God that we will see in our children God's tra transform their lives. Yes. In every area, yes. it's not just so much about their uh, academics. Yes, but if they get the the basics, if they get the uh, what you say, the foundation of who God is, because we know mm -hmm. that God is not it's not separate. God and science, God and he, God is oh, science. Yes. God is yes. that. So yes. when they get understanding of who they are in the world, and that's our heartbeat here with our children, knowing who they are and who they are, yes. and they will be able to accomplish. The things as far as the academics or what have yes, you, yes. Uh, we believe we're gonna see. We had an uh, open house on uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and the parents are there just in agreement. We're gonna see yes. our children transform in a sense of time. We got you know, so many kids yes. raised up in the church, and they go off to college and then begin to believe other things that's not of right. God. But we're not saying we're just not sending them to school. We're in partnership here at Destin Christian Academy to say that we believe that we're in the children at whatever age, kindergarten, if you're in sixth grade, you will actually walk in authority of what God says you are. Because yes. our kids pray for each other, yes. lay hands on each other. So yes. whatever God called you to do, if it's writing books, you don't have to wait until you are in your 20s or your 30s and find out your re revelation of, oh, I'm supposed to write a book. No, write the books now. Yes. You know, coding yes. now, whatever it is, the, yes. the gift that God has placed on the inside of them. But I believe in God. To, we, we, we're called to provoke yeah. the gifts inside of them. Yeah. And so say, hey, I'm not um, a student of Destiny Christian Academy. It's okay. Your kids are with you. We're praying for them as yeah. well. Amen. Wherever you are, if you're teaching your students as parents, we want to pray for you. If you're Amen. an adult going back to school, yeah. we want to pray for you too. If you're a student here, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So no matter where you are in the yeah. spectrum. Yeah. yeah, I would just shout out El Lord. Yeah, Woo! wherever you are. Yes, a student. Yes. Yeah. So not even she's only in the school system, but she's in the school system for herself. But we're yes. gonna pray, we want to pray for her as well. All of the ones, um, that's a matter of what age you are. Wherever you are in the spectrum, we believe in God for your life, and you will see a transformation this year. Yes. And I'm so, you know, this is our jubilee yes. year. Yes. Yes. Glory yes. To God. This is our jubilee yes. year. So Amen. if you're teaching, if your student's going to be home, yes. we're praying that they're going to be in the school. And whatever decision you make, don't go on, don't go on. This is what, if you have peace to be home with your kids, to home, I mean, not take, sending them back to school, just have peace in that. Yeah. If yeah. someone said, well, I'm going to send mine back, that's them. Right. Let's pray for each other, yeah. wherever you are. If you're yeah. a teacher and had to go back into the school system, mm -hmm. and I don't even know if you want to be there, wherever you are, but just be in peace of where God has you placed. Yeah. And know that you're covered. Because yeah. we believe in Psalms 91. So wherever yes. you are, yes. you yes. are covered yes. by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Okay? So Pastor Tony... And the ones that's here, um, I know if you close, you can fist bump or just stay where you are. But we all, at one accord, we're going to pray and believe and um, confess over our uh, students, teachers, parents, and everyone that's involved in this year's school year. Praise God. Glory to God. Yeah. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Yes, Father, we declare your word reigns supreme yes, in the lives of your students, yes. in the lives of your teachers. Faculty, staff, volunteers, we pray, we declare that every child is light. Every child has giftings, talents, and abilities. Yes, yes. 
We declare, Father God, that those giftings, talents, and abilities are, are cultivated, yes. are, are crafted. They, they, they're, they're nurtured by teachers, whether they be teachers in a school, virtual, or, or in home with their parents. We declare their parents have all the wisdom made available to teach their children. We declare that every child is unique. Every child is, is special. Every child has a destiny and a future. Yes. We, we call forth the authors. We call forth the lawyers, the yes. doctors. Yes. We call forth the elected appointed officials. Yes. We call forth mayors, governors, senators. Yes, we call forth nurses. We call forth EMT. We call forth every area that, Father, you have called people into to make this world reflect your glory. Yes. And we declare each child has a glimpse of who you are. Yes. And they yes. walk in your glory. And they walk in purpose. Father God, we pray for every parent who are in this, in this season who feels uncertain about being adequate to teach their children or uncertain about sending their children back to public school. Father, we declare your peace upon their household. We declare that sweet rest be in their life. Yes. Father, we, we call forth every college student, yes, yes. every yes, instructor, yes, every yes, professor, yes, yes. every administrator, yes, yes. every even one that work in the loan offices, Father yes. God. We declare yes. that your hands be on their paperwork, your hands yes. are on their yes. folders, yes, your hands are all on, on anything and everything that concerns them. Where you sit yes. where you will perfect those things yes. that concern us. You will bring those things forth to fruition, to light. And Father, we, we ask you now uh, for this nation, for every student, every, every teacher, every employee, faculty. They, they may not be a teacher. They may work in the lunchroom. They may work in, 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 you know, in, in the halls. They, they may be a monitor. They may be a custodian. They may, may be the lunchroom uh, observer. But wherever they are, Father God, when we speak, Father God, that as they see these children, yes. they see you. Yes. And as, as our children see the staff, faculty, and volunteers, they see you. Yes. And, and because if we see you, Father, we see peace. If we yes. see you, Father, yes. we see direction. We see yes. consolation. We see hope. Yes. We see comfort. Yes. Father, we know that even with this, we plead your blood over every yes. child, over every student over every yes, teacher, Lord. over every instructor, over every professor, yes, every employee, yes, every volunteer. Yes, and where the enemy wants to sift them like wheat. Yes, but we declare for DCA, yes, Lord Jesus. we declare that no weapon formed shall prosper. Yes, we declare that these children will be blessed to be blessings. Yes, yes, When they do come across people of different thought processes and different points of view, they will extend your love, but they will be anchored by your word. Nothing will sway them, nothing will move them, nothing will rip them, take them from your hand. Yes, 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 yes. No one can be plucked from your hand, Father. Yes. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you. Jesus said he's already prayed yes. for us. Thank you, Lord. So he has no say-so over your family, mom and dad. He has no say-so over your children, mom and dad. But your children will be nurtured and will grow in the admonition of the Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And it's in Jesus' name we thank you. And all that agree with that say amen. 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 Lord, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. At this time, just uh, the ones that's in-house, if you like to, if you want to just wave your hand and uh, greet somebody, you can do it here. Yeah, high five. Air high five. Air high five. Yes, we Air hand hug and neck. We got a mask on. Air handshake. There you go. And if you don't mind, you can just say hello. You wait to us if you don't mind with us. We thank God for you. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be with us today. And we don't count that. Uh, we don't take that for granted. Yes, God is an honor. Well, for De Destiny Christian Academy, our first day of school is September the 8th, Tuesday coming up. So we're excited about that. Uh, also, we'll be virtual for until December 
to further notice. Um, so if you want to know more about uh, Destiny Christian Academy, we have a Facebook page. You can um, view us there. So at this time, good people, we have an opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard someone say, you know, about being obedient to God in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. And just that um, when I say obedient, this should not be a hard thing to do. It's easy. Right. When you love God, you love someone, you want to give. So here we are now, so we're going to give. And I don't want to rush this wherever you are. Mm -hmm. The ones that's in-house, we know, but the ones online right now, as Minister Shawanda said, just ask God, you know what? Mm -hmm. You know what you want or what, what have you, what your heart is uh, supposed to do this morning as far as giving it to um, every walk of life yeah. ministry. So at this time, this is a, a form of worship. Mm -hmm. We're worshiping God in our gift, what we receive. So now what I receive, Lord, I worship you in my giving at this time. Yeah. So if you would, just take your time to get, uh, prepare. You can give. Um, it should be on your screen at this time. Mm -hmm. How you can yeah, give at this part. time. All right. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And also, um, Cash Up is there. Cash App. Yeah. So it should be there. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited. This is our first time seeing y'all. Don't know what the little, the little grand, grand cubs walked in today. <laughs> first time. Are y'all ready to give? You ready to give? Amen. 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 Right. Praise God. All right, good people. We're going to go ahead and, and declare over our offering. We ask you to repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I have brought from my house. I have brought from my house. The holy thing. The holy thing. That belongs to you. That belongs to you. My tithe. My tithe. My offering. My offering. My love gift. My love gift. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. I give because I trust you. I give because I trust you. I give because I honor you. I give because I honor you. I give because I love you. I give because I love you. Look down from heaven. Look down from heaven. And bless. And bless. My family. My family. My church. My church. And me. And me. Increase. Increase. On every side. On every side. In every area. In every area. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, it's time for the word. Glory, glory. glory to God. I'm going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right, well, I'm going to Yes, indeed. Okay. Got you. All right. All right. I guess I'll see you a little bit. All right. All right. All right. See you later. <laughs> All right, good people. Uh, virtual congregation, people visiting with us, in house, online, God has a plan for your life. Uh, I thank Minister Shawanda and Minister Tarshila for setting the atmosphere. Yeah. I thank the Father for being here and sitting down with us. Uh, understanding there are so many things that they had just begin to flow in. And I just kept, you know, nudging my wife and showing her my notes. <laughs> nudging my wife and showing her my notes. Nudging my wife. And so, you know, there, there's some things you're probably going to hear again. It's because you heard it earlier. But that's okay. Um, God is doing a powerful work even in this time. Uh, sometimes we, we want to, some people, man, as a child of God, you are all, always looking with expectation and every opportunity for God to show himself strong. He already said it in Second Chronicles, I believe, 16, 19. He's, he's searching the earth. He's, he's looking around to see who he can show off to. He's looking around to see who he can just make his presence wow. known to. He's looking around to see who, who's going to give me an opportunity to let me show them what I can do for them. Amen. God is constantly looking. And so you, you, you can't, yeah, I know a lot of, some, a lot of bad things have happened mm -hmm. during this season. I'm not going to deny it. No, that's not, no, a lot of bad stuff has happened during this season and during this time. But we still serve a good God. Amen. A lot of stuff happened that, that we didn't expect to happen. A lot of stuff happened that we, we didn't plan to happen. A lot of stuff happened that we said we thought by now we'd be out of but God is still good. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. I want you to grasp that concept. God is still good. I don't say I got still good in the middle of this. No, nope. God is still good. Yeah. Regardless of how you look, think, or feel at it about a situation, God is still good. And we look to him to set everything in order. We look to him to hold everything in harmony. We look to him to make sure that we don't look to ourselves because we start looking at ourselves, things start to go sideways. 
Trust God in everything. Yes. Trust God in all that you deal with and all that you go through. Mm -hmm. Some stuff is not comfortable. Some stuff doesn't feel good. Some stuff doesn't look good. But know this, God is good. And if God is good and your heart is towards him, he's coming for you. And he's coming to bring goodness to you. Amen. He's going to show himself strong. He's going to flex that muscle. And you're going to see some things that move in your life Amen. that you will have to say if it had not been yes. for the Lord who was on my side. Thank you, praise God. Praise God. All right, good people, let's jump into this. We, we, here we are. We, we, we've been dealing. We're, we're flowing, celebrating his promises. We, we talked about um, living the transformed life. The heartbeat of 2020, even when we started, we said we're going to celebrate his promises. Because all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. What are you saying? I'm saying this. Everything heaven has to offer us is in Jesus. And it's already been endorsed by God. Everything heaven has to offer us is in Christ. Healing, peace of mind, direction, prospering in all areas. Yeah, finances too. But everything Everything that heaven has to offer us, and heaven has, <laughs> heaven has storehouses of things we haven't even scratched the surface on. In relationships, in your finances, in your emotional, in your mental, in your wherever you may fall in the spectrum, every area of your life, heaven has a, an abundance, a surplus, if you would, of whatever you need. And it's found in Christ. It's endorsed by God. God's hand endorsed the check for whatever is needed for you. A blank check. And that blank check, that access code is found in Christ. And in, and in, and in him only. I heard Mrs. Juan was saying it earlier. Sometimes people, people search to find that completeness in, 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 in relationships, in a spouse. Uh, completeness in, in, in a career. Completeness, you know, job, fame, money, whatever. And you will never find it. You will search your whole life and you will never find it. That's pretty common. Yeah, you will never find it there. Because you will only find it. You're complete, you're complete in Christ. Even the scriptures say, you, now you are complete in him. Nothing else, no one else is going to make you complete. Don't care how fine your man is. It's not going to make you complete. Don't care how you say, oh, my, oh, my pastor, my wife. Oh, no, I don't care. She's not going to make you complete. Only Christ is going to make you complete. Well, Pastor, I was the number one salesman in all the Southeast region. I, I, I'm, I'm at six figures now. I'm top of my game. Does not matter. Only in him are you complete. Only in him. So here we go. We, we, we've been talking about this. That's the heartbeat. Every promise. And, and during this time in living the transformed life, we've been talking about 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Uh, anyone in the Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Your newness as Minister, Minister Tarsha was talking about a new. Your newness is found in Christ. Your newness is found in Christ. Your newness of life is found in Christ. Your every day of new is found in Christ. Now, that's found, look at Your newness only happens in Christ. But Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of the mind. The newness comes when my mind is anchored in Christ. So here we go. It says, newness only continues in your thinking, speaking, and believing towards the things of Christ. Newness only continues in my thinking towards Christ, my speaking towards Christ, my believing towards Christ. All, all those are tied. This is why I said the renewing of your mind. Because thoughts become words, and words become actions. I gotta renew this in here. Even when stuff don't look right, I gotta, even when stuff goes sideways, I still have to speak that things are, are at peace. Even when there's chaos, I still have to speak peace in the midst of a storm. Even when it seems like I'm lost, I still have to speak direction. Even though I may be thinking, Oh, my mind may be thinking, but I can't let it come out here. 
Your mind may be thinking, she want to go, go ahead, go. No, your, your mind may be thinking, well, he, he, act like he can leave. No, your mind may say that, but your mouth better not because your words hold weight. And the enemy knows this. Heaven is wanting to convince you of this. The enemy already knows because if you continue to speak negative, negative will take place. Well, I'm going to lose this job. I'm a man, I'm going to lose it. Hey, you're going to keep around. You're going to lose that job. And you lost sleep. I told you, I'm going to lose it. You spoke it. We don't understand the power of our words. And you know what? The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness knows how powerful your words are. We have to know it. And we have to make sure we continue to think right. Look, right believing flows from right speaking. Right speaking flows from right thinking. If I don't think right, I won't speak right. If I don't speak it right, I won't believe it right. And, and, and it will not come to fruition as it should. As Jesus is, so are we in this earth. There are certain things when the centurion came to him and said, all you got to do is speak the word and my servant will be healed. And that's the same thing happened. We, we just speak the word. We walk in it. I remember, man, a couple, couple of years ago, uh, I call her cousin, right, 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 right cousin. I remember one time she had gotten sick and they took her to the hospital. And my wife called me and we were, we were still doing things at the church. I said, and this just came up. I said, she'll be better by the time I get there. I didn't say, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? I said, no. I said, she will be better by the time I get there. I did that. In my mind, all kind of thoughts were coming. They were in a test. They don't know what's going on. Or, and, and my, but out of my mouth. Yes. 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 See, there's a part of there's parts of you. There's parts of you that will, will, will drop in facts and information. There's parts of you that will drop in uh, what I've already received right now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the data. And I'm trying to analyze it. All that stuff will come in. But then there's an area of you as a believer yes. that the Spirit has to stand up and say something. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. I said, she will be better by the time I get there. And what do you mean nobody else was there? I didn't say, I didn't say I'm going to talk about anybody else. But I said, by the time I get there. And this is what you have to do in your walk with God. No matter what other people may say. No matter if the job is shutting down, I will have a job yeah. by tomorrow, this time. Yeah. 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 Let us go. You know, you're going to have a job. You've been looking? No, but God knew this was going to happen before I did. So he already had something set in place for me. So I'm only going to speak what I want to see. And so when I got to the hospital in the emergency room, walking down the hall, you know, you got to go in, you got to check in, you got to get, and you're falling through there. When I walked through the door, she looked at me and said, Papa. And so it's like everybody else is like, honey, you don't know, you don't understand. I didn't have to know and understand. There's a lot of things we don't have to understand. Sometimes we try to wrap our brain around a lot of stuff. You don't have to. God has done it for you. But speak what you want to see. And if it's life, if it pertains to life and godliness, if it pertains to, to increase, if it pertains to promotion and advancement, those are what heaven has on order for you. So you only speak what heaven gives you to speak. You speak God's word and God's word only. If you want to see increase, you speak what God says about increase, not what man says about increase. Now, here we go. L last time we were together, because the last week we were, it was, there was a family first fellowship, so everybody was enjoying their first ministry, which was church, which was home. Enjoy your first ministry. We, we, are, we believe in that a healthy man. We believe that a healthy family produces a healthy church. Which produces a healthy community. And a lot of times people will do the work of the ministry. They do busy work. They do, the, they do work. But their family goes lacking. And so children grow up with a resentment of church. They grow up with a resentment. My mom was an evangelist. They grow, grow up with a resentment. My dad was a pastor. They grow up with resentment. It's because we push hard to that. And we sacrifice our children on the altar of ministry. That's not biblical. When God created Adam and Eve, when God created Adam and Eve, he, God didn't say, okay, we're going to make a church. He started with a family first. 
So we think. We're going to leave that right there and move on to something else, okay? All right. Last time we were together, we said transformation requires developing inner court confidence. What were we talking about? We said this. We said, you have to ask yourself a question. Can I carry the people in my circle? And can my circle carry me? There are things that we have to remember that you have to develop your core, your inner court. And it's you that has to place and misplace and displace people in and out of your inner court. And if your inner court is how it is, then it's a reflection of who you are. And you can't get don't get mad with anybody else's inner court because you invited them in there. It's like you invite, you know, you, you're, at, you're at a four top table and you invite 10 people and you're mad because everybody's there. It's like, you invited us. That's why we're here. So you got to cut some things out. Now, here we go. We also talked about how you have to be able to trust your core. Can you trust them? And can you trust them to take you to the feet of Jesus? And can they trust you for you to take them to the feet of Jesus? Inner core confidence. We have to develop it. We have to maintain it. It's something that we're always, we're always working on. You're always fashioning. you got to be skillful in it. You're constantly doing it. Sometimes inner core people are there for a season. Sometimes inner core people are like, okay, you're, you're, yeah, life changes. Sometimes people, you know, move on. Sometimes people pass away. But that core, you still have to operate in your core. Who, who, can, I, who can I know that won't drop me? Who do I know that won't drop me? And who can rely on me not to drop them? That's what you have your core. Now, this week, hmm, geez, this week, transformation requires a couple of things. Transformation requires assessing. Transformation requires speaking. Transformation requires observing. And I will tell you today, we will probably not get into all of this, but we're going to jump in where we can, and you might get an area, and you, have to, you know how we do DVR and Netflix and Hulu, we just hit the pause button, and have to come back to it. So that's maybe what we'll have to do today. But if you would, wow. If we can, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, and we're going, to, we're going to try to get through verses 1 through 14. Okay. Put, put, put a pin there. Okay. Ewall knows me. You're getting ready to know me. Some of you probably already know me. Everybody's like, okay, what are we doing? Okay, I'm, I'm telling you to just put a pin right there because we're getting ready to hit another scripture real quick. Because I, I, I feel like I gotta just share this right now, and then we're gonna dive into something a little deeper. Go to First Peter, chapter three. First Peter, chapter three, verse ten and eleven. First Peter, chapter three, verse ten and eleven. We're gonna read verses ten and eleven. Hmm. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 10 and 11 of course this is <laughs> alright here we go for he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. I'm reading the New King James Version. Let him turn away from evil and do good and let him seek peace and pursue it. Now I'm going to read this to you from the Passion Translation. Passion Translation says it like this. It says, for the scripture tells us whoever wants to embrace true life and find beauty in each day 
You have to ask yourself a question. Do I want to embrace true life? Do I want to see beauty in each day? I'm tired of looking at the negative. I'm tired of seeing, you know, sometimes I got to turn the news off. Sometimes it's the best thing to make your day even better. Just shut the news down. Because it seems like everything that is coming in has nothing to do with life, has nothing to do with uplifting, has nothing to do. And sometimes people are, well, we're just giving information. Sometimes bad information is not needed to, you don't need to hear it that time. But it says this. It says, whoever wants to embrace true life and whoever wants to find beauty in each day, what must we do? Must stop speaking evil. So there's power in your words. There's power in what you say. So I want to, wait, wait. So you're telling me, in order for me to embrace true life, in order for me to see the beauty in the day, I have to change what I'm saying. I have to adjust what I'm speaking. He says this. He says, you must stop speaking evil, hurtful words, and never deceive in what you say. Also turn. That sounds like repentance. He also turn from what is wrong and cultivate what is good. Eagerly pursue peace in every relationship, making it your prize. I first have to start with the speaking before I can start. You first have to start with the speaking before you can get to the turning. You, you, you can't turn. You can't repent without words. You, you can't, there's no adjustment can be made until I say I'm turning around. The prodigal son's life didn't change until he said, I will get up and I will go back to my father's house and I will say X, Y, and Z. I have to say this first before it can take place. Thoughts become words. Words become action. At first, I have to assess where I am. That's it. I'm in a pig pen. Uh, I think so. I'm actually craving what they're eating right now. Mm. When, when did I get here? I'm assessing what's going on in my life right now. That's good. That's good. I'm around pigs. I'm associated with pigs. I'm actually jealous of the pigs. I'm actually wanting to have, I'm actually wanting to partake in what they're partaking in. Bob said he came to himself. Wait, wait. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up from here, go back to my dad, and say, you know, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not even worthy to be called your son. He didn't think about it. He didn't just sit there and think on it. It came to thought. Then he spoke. Then he got into action. You assess your situation. You speak what you want to see. And then you observe, where am I now? I'm not where I need to be. Let me get where I need to go. Transformation requires that. Transformation requires you to step back and assess your life. Step back and assess what's going on here. Man, Jesus. You have to ask yourself a question. What am I thinking? What am I speaking? What am I believing? He's like, what do I want to see? I want to see good in my life. Okay, well you, you got to... What is it, Philippians? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. Was it? He said, you got to think on these things. If you want to start speaking good, you have to start thinking on things that are good. Yeah. I got I got to change my thought life if I want to change what I'm speaking, if I want to change what I'm believing, if I want to change what I'm seeing. Because a lot of times I can see bad, but I don't have to speak that it's bad. I can see bad. I, look, I can see a difficult situation, but I don't have to endorse it. Yeah, that's, that's bad. No, no, no. <laughs> I just step back and say, mm, what do I want to? I understand what I'm saying, okay? I'm not blind. I'm not, uh, you know, no. Sometimes we, we like to have, um, oh, Lord, pray for me. Sometimes, sometimes as believers, the world looks at us and, and because, because Jesus has been so misrepresented in a lot of areas, sometimes people, they look at, oh, man, 
you Christians, man, y'all are off in some positive, floaty world and nothing ever happens bad and yeah. just think good thoughts and I'll be okay. And it, it goes deeper than that. Yeah, think good. But it tells you what to think on. What's true? What's a love? What's a good report? I got to think on those things because I can still look at it. I can still give her, I can look at this and say, hmm. I can think on it and say, yeah, that's, that's not God's best for my life. So I got to start speaking what I want to see. Here we go. All right. We're, we're not going to get, we're not going to binge all this. I can tell you that right now. God help us today. Ezekiel chapter 37. Now we can go back. Oh, we can go back now? Now you can go back. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 37. Verse, we're going to start with verse 1. I'm going to be reading to you from the NIV. What's that? New International Version. Okay. It says, the hand, this is Ezekiel writing, he said, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. Okay, so here we go. The prophet is having a divine experience with God. God takes him and takes him to this place. He shows him a valley. He said, he takes me and he sets me in the middle of a valley. I love that part. We're going to be dealing with some stuff later on. I shared some things with my wife. Uh, I don't know when this is going to kick off. But there are some things that a lot of us are in the middle of. And, and God's going to be dealing with your middle. Okay? Here we go. He said, he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign, sovereign Lord, you alone know. We're going to start right there. Ezekiel says, God sits him in the middle of a valley of bones. Now, usually bones are usually associated with death. Something has already come through, whatever, it, whether it died or was killed, only thing that's left are bones. So that means life is gone from these. Not only is life gone from these, it says that God and Ezekiel did a walkthrough. You know how sometimes when you go to look at a house, or you're, you're buying your house, or you're checking out of your apartment, they say, we want you to go ahead and do a walkthrough. You know, you, you're checking things out. Okay, well, everything looks, you know, there's, a, there's something wrong with that light. They're looking at everything. You know, the carpet looks like it's, it's, it's cut right there. You're doing a walkthrough. You're assessing Things. You're walking through, checking out what what is what needs to be taken care of and what's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm assessing the situation. There are times even when storms come through, hurricanes come through. Sometimes you'll have officials, you have governors, you have presidents, you have different ones, mayors come through different towns, and they and they look to assess the damage that was done. They look to assess how it really looks. Some areas are like, man, this is really bad. This is wow. I don't see how they're going to come back from this. They, they look. Now, here we go. Ezekiel, though he thought this, you have to know when he spoke. Nowhere, it didn't say he said this. He thought this. Ezekiel looked at what God took him through. God did a walk through in that valley, and they saw the bones, and the one, one translation said they were very dry. One said they were bleached. Which means there was no marrow, no nothing, no, it's past life, there's no hope here. So he's looking at it, and he's like, yeah, this is, this is very dry. But then God asked him the question, can these bones live? Is there hope after this? So Ezekiel gives the proper response. God, only you know. If anything had happened with this. In other words, if Ezekiel would have said, no, this is over, that would have been the end of the conversation. Because he spoke, there's nothing left here. He spoke, there's no life here. He spoke, there's no second chance here. But because he said, Lord, only you know, he took the limits off. And he allowed God to show himself strong. There are a lot of situations that we may be a part of that God allows us to assess. And then the Spirit may hit us Questions may come. Do you see any hope in that? 
Sometimes you got to be like old folks and say, baby, only the Lord knows. Yeah. Only the Lord knows. You have to think, why? Because I'm trusting in him. Because if it had to be of my own ability, I would write it off. It had to be on my own judgment, I would say this is the end. If it had to be based on what I can assume, assume, you know what, just pack your bags, turn off the lights, and leave. There's nothing else here, there's nothing else here for us. It's over. But no. He said, though I saw it was dry, I assessed that there was nothing there. But I only spoke what I wanted to see in God. So then, God says this. Verse 4 says this. Then he said to me, prophesy to the bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. He didn't say dry bones, hear the word of Ezekiel. Right, right, right. If your situation is dry, your situation is dead, if your situation is beyond, as you would say, hope, I am not going to speak my words to it. I have to speak God's words to it. So in your situation, only speak what God has said about the situation. Only speak what God has spoken about your life. Transformation can't take place with any other word than the word of God. You have to speak what God is speaking about your life for you to see transformation. You have to be saying what God is saying. You have to be directing how God is directing. Because if you do not, and you speak out of emotion, if you speak out of either ignorance or arrogance, you would come to the end of that situation. So Ezekiel says this. God, God tells him to speak, and God says this. Only tell him, only speak what I tell you to speak. Isn't that amazing? Those of you in relationships, isn't that amazing? You have an argument with somebody, you say, I didn't start the argument. And the Spirit is telling you to go apologize. The Spirit is telling you, go say I'm sorry. The Spirit is telling you. Ask them what they want for dinner. The Spirit is telling you, do you want me to make you a sandwich? The Spirit is telling you, like, why, why would I say that? I didn't even start this. You know, I'm tired of this marrying around. No, no, no. Don't speak that. The Spirit is telling you what to speak. Because the Spirit wants God's best for your life. So the Spirit is saying, say this. What you, what you, want, what you want for dinner tonight? I mean, I know, I know you like Chinese, but what, what, what do you want? Where? Why am I saying it? You're saying what the word is saying. I know, look, sometimes people think this ain't very Christian. -y. Uh, you should be quoting scripture. No, that's the problem. A lot of people know scripture. Mm. But no, don't, don't know God. If you, if you check the scripture, you know, and, and dealt with Jesus' um, dealt with Jesus' temptation, the enemy could dab a little bit in scripture. The enemy did that. So it's, it's not that you know a lot of scripture. Not that you know a lot of word. Yeah, you get the word in you. Don't do it from memorization. Do it from impartation. Let the word be in you. And you can speak what God says. Don't rattle them off because it sounded good. Oh, I'm gonna write that down. No, don't rattle off because it sounded good. Is this what the Lord is this, is this what the Lord is saying for this situation? Because you notice Ezekiel didn't quote scripture. He spoke what he wanted to say. God said, dry bones live. He sat there and said this. He said, he said so I prophesied to the bones. I spoke to him. What did you say? He said, I said, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says to these bones. I will make breath or wind or spirit coming to you. And you will come to life. I will attach tendons. I will attach muscle. I will attach sinew. I will attach all these things to the bone. And then from that, I will cover the I will cover your organs. I will cover the muscle with flesh or skin. So he said all these things. He said, and, and, and then he says this. He pretty much gives him how this thing is going to go down. There's dry bones. I'm going to bring muscle back on. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring organs back in. I'm going to bring blood, blood, blood flow, veins. I'm going to put skin back on. And then I will breathe breath into you. He gave it to him in that order. Now, here we go. There's a lot of things that in transformation, it requires some order. Some steps you can't skip. Comes transformation, there's some things you just can't, you can't skip this. You have to go through this. Well, I want to be able to bench press 450 pounds. Well, you got to start at 50 pounds. No, I can skip that. I know I can do better than that. No, because you're going to hurt yourself. 
You, have, you can't skip steps in certain things. You have to start here and work through the process. As I said before, we don't trust the process. We trust God, God in the process. Okay? So there we go. Verse 7. He says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. God tells him what to say. Tells him how to say it. And then Ezekiel says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Transformation also requires obedience to the Spirit. You have to be able to be pliable in order to see God's goodness. In order for you to see the miraculous, you have to be able to be pliable to the things of God. I want change. You want change? Well, you have to change. A lot of times people want change, don't want to change. I, when I, well, hold on. <laughs> you misunderstood me. When I say I want change, I mean I want you to change. <laughs> and that's what happens sometimes in relationships. That's what happens sometimes in people's life. That's what happens sometimes in people's career, their job, whatever. They say, no, I want change in my life. They're saying they want change, but inside they're saying, no, I don't want to change. I want all this to change. I want you to change. But, it, but the, the, the prophet said, I prophesied and I was commanded. I didn't speak any more. I didn't speak any less. I only spoke what the, what the Spirit told me to say. Whew. All right, here we go. And he said, and as I was prophesying, as I was speaking, there are things in your life that will, will hinder you. There are things in your life that will rob you. There are things in your life that you can see in a situation, and that stuff will not change until you start speaking. Because it says this, he said, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise. I want to hear something. Start singing something. <laughs> what I want to hear, start singing. Start speaking. Because what I'm seeing is not what I want to see. So I got to start speaking what I want to see. And you, you start speaking what you want to see, start hearing for the noise. Mm, that's good. Start hearing for it. Because things are going to start rumbling in your life. Things are, and it's okay. It's okay about the rumbling. Why? Because things are getting in order. It's okay about the, what's going on in there. Some stuff moving around. Some stuff being moved out. Because see, the bones were dry. And not only were the bones dry, they were displaced. Mm. They weren't even together. Woo. So you got dryness and chaos. There are some things in your life that is dry, and there's some stuff in your life that is not together. Some stuff has not been replaced, it's been displaced. You don't even know where to, you don't know where to begin. You don't know what goes where, because when the prophet looked at the ground, he said, okay, I see a foot, I see a leg bone, I see, I don't even know, these don't even look like they go together. I don't even know how to sort this out. There's stuff in your life you don't know how to sort out. And that's okay. Because you, you, you serve a God who specializes in sorting stuff out. You serve a God who specializes in getting things in order. You serve a God who specializes, okay, and he, he lets you walk through. He'll walk you through it. This is your life. He said, what do you see? He said, oh, my God. God, this is. And the enemy wants you to say there is no hope. But God wants you to know that even in this, there's always hope. Because you may come to a part in your life where you say, this is the end of the road. I don't see anything coming back from this. And God's saying, give me a chance. Give me an opportunity. So he says, just speak what I tell you to speak. Trust me. Just say what I tell you to say. Okay. I start speaking what I want to see. My son's been rebellious. My son's been out all hours of the night. He didn't even think about that. I say, good morning, man of God. And you're like, this, this feels weird. Because it, what happens is it conflicts. The reason it feels weird is because it, you're speaking contrary to what you're seeing. And that will always be because light and darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend light. So it's always, I feel weird sitting here saying, I thank God for a good marriage. And, and we, we, we ain't spoke in months. Living in the same house, doing our own thing. We, I'm saying, I thank God for a good marriage. I thank God that my wife is, is a woman of God. I thank God that my man, is, my husband is a priest of my home. I feel weird doing that. Why? You feel weird because your emotions are tangling up with your spirit. And 
the spirit man is speaking your destiny. Mm. And your emotions are speaking to your circumstance. Mm. Spirit speaks to destiny. Spirit speaks to the end of a thing. Spirit speaks to what I've already, I already see it. Mm -hmm. Manifested. Right. Emotions speak to my circumstance right here, right now. And you have to get to a place where you allow your spirit to rule over emotion. Mm -hmm. And your emotion may be, ah, I'm all, it's all right, you just hang right there. He said, as I was prophesying, noise broke out. There was a rattling. Why? Bone was coming to its... Let me, let me read. Okay, okay. I'm, 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 I have to put a pause right here in a minute. He said, <laughs> a rattling sound, and bones were coming together. Not just any bones, but bone to its bone. Foot was coming to its leg. Leg was going, arms, shoulders. Everything was going to that body. Making that thing, even though it was scattered, everything's coming together to make it unified. Everything's coming together to make it complete. Everything's coming together to make it whole. And this is what this is who Christ is in our life. My life was scattered. My life was all over the place. But when I came to Christ, he started putting the pieces back in place. He put pieces where they should be, not where I have. And this is what God will do for you. He'll take, your, he'll take those things in your life and he'll put them where they should be and not where you have or not where you thought they should go. So he takes it and he starts putting it together and, and, and look, everything is taking place as the prophet had already spoken by the word of the Lord. A lot of times you'll speak a thing. There are times in your life you'll speak something. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. But there will be a shaking. Don't be afraid of the shaking. Things are just settling. Things are starting to come in place. Don't be afraid of the shaking. Don't be afraid of the noise. It's like, God, it feels like the more I talk about it, the louder things get. The more, the, look, the more I pray about it, the worse things get. No, no, no. It's just moving. It's adjusting. It's shifting. Because he said, I, I, it was quiet in this valley. Then I started speaking, and noise started breaking out. Stuff started rumbling around in this place. It's okay. It's okay. Because things are shifting. It, it may not look like it. it. It may not look good, but it's working out for your good. So everything is starting to come together as it should be. And he said, when I was speaking, bone came to bone. It found its place. It no longer was displaced. It found a place. God wants you to find your place. Then is muscle, tissue, organs, ligaments, joints, cartilage, brain matter. Everything began to come together. And you're like, and it was, it, it, look, everything covered itself. He said, I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. What are you saying? Hmm. Here we go. Verse 9. Then he said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say, this is what the sovereign Lord said, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, once again, being obedient, and I breathed and, and breath into them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. It went from scattered debris, went from no hope and death, to now a living, breathing army. All because he spoke what God spoke and not what he thought. There are things in your life that you will see before you that may look dry and may look as there is no hope. It's, it's funny how y'all was talking about hope earlier and I sure about I sure about it. Look at this. Transformation requires Oh, okay, let me see if I can read this here. <laughs> lordy, lordy, lordy. Transformation requires being detailed. No matter what the situation looks like, 
be detailed. Say what you want to see in detail because your words hold weight. Young man, don't just say, I, I want a good wife. <laughs> say, what do you say? What you want to see? I want a good wife who's good with money, who can help me with this. You, you can be specific. <laughs> Ladies, you want to see, don't, I, I, I just want to be fine. Eh. <laughs> because these, no doubt, there was probably some fine ones out there, but they had no breath in them. Wow. So, what good is that? They were there. They were, they were, look, muscle, chest, everything. But there was still no breath in them. They still had no spirit. There was still no, she, she, whatever. She can look good, she can, hourglass, fine. But if there's no spirit, no spirit, can't really fight with no spirit. Because it says here, he, he spoke, breath come forth, four winds, breath came, they stood up and it said a vast army. So they went from dead bones to an army. And look, once the breath got in them, now here's the thing, once the breath got in them, then they were called an army. Yeah. If God's spirit is not in you, you're not a warrior. <laughs> if God's spirit is not in you, you can't fight. You have to have the spirit of God in you in order to be able to handle all the things that come forward. So, last thing, and then we're, we're out of here. Verse 10 says this, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered, and he came, and life, they stood on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. This, this represents, this, this mimics the house of Israel. Why do you say that, God? Because it said in verse 12, Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, my people... I am going to open your graves and bring you out of them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. Oh, verse 11. Let me go back to verse 11. Because this is what he said. He says it represents the house of Israel. How does it represent the house of Israel? He said because right now, they're saying there's no hope. You have people that are if you're not speaking what God is speaking, you're speaking in rebellion. If you're not speaking what God is speaking, you're speaking contrary. So even if there is tough times, even if there, it seems like there's a dryness, even if it seems like things are scattered, if you are one in the army of the Lord, if you are one of God's people, if you are his creation, if you are his children, then I don't care how bad a situation looks, it's not over until he says it's over. It's not done until he says it's done. And a lot of times we go with things and we run to things, but there's no spirit in them. There's no breath in them. We run to the job, six figures. I say, is that the Lord? I just told you, six figures. You know that's the Lord. Not necessarily. Not, not, not necessarily. You can run to it, and there, there's, no, no, there's no vibrancy in it. It's not bringing anything to you. You're getting a check, but you're still bankrupt. Oh, yeah, you got the house, you got the car, you got the, yeah. But you're still bankrupt. There's no peace. So, God tells his people, because his people have already said, our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, and we are cut off. God is saying to Ezekiel, tell my people, just as this looked hopeless, and I brought it together, just as this looked beyond repair, and I made it whole, just as this looked like it was the lost cause, and I renewed, restored, and revived, I can do the same for them. And God is saying to you today, he can do the same for you. Amen. You're not past the point of no return. You're not beyond repair. You're not beyond recognition. God can tell who you are even by your bones. Because God was around before CSI and NCIS. And he was, before, he was around before DNA. He, he, he knew you. So you 
even though your mouth says no hope, God is saying be hopeful because I am the God of all hope. God bless you. God keep you. If you want to see change, if you want to see your life differently, if you want to see good days, change what you're thinking. Change what you're speaking. God bless you. Thank God for this word. Um, I was just reminded of something uh, my um, sister said to me this morning. She said that she was walking around with her husband somewhere and she could just see souls that would just see the people dead. You're walking around existing, but something on the inside of you is just not breathing. It's not alive. And as Pastor Tony was talking about how the people, we can have bones and stuff, but we, there's no breath in them. There's no breath of life. There's no spirit of God in them. And I'm here to tell you, God wants you living. He wants you thriving. Yeah. He wants you to experience his goodness and his mercy. Yeah. And we learned today that it's going to start by what we're speaking. So today, let's leave here um, making up our mind that we are going to speak what God's word says, we're going to speak his promises. Amen? Amen. 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 If you were um, just touched by today or you say, man, this, uh, this, I, I don't know where to start, but I just know I, I want to live. I want to be transformed. And I know God, but I haven't been walking with him. I'm here to tell you, um, God is standing here. I, I believe this was such a, uh, that today was a kiss from God of saying, I see you, I love you, I'm, yes. I'm here with you, and today is your day to just make up your mind, you know, I'm going to rededicate my life to him today. I'm going to begin to speak differently, I'm going to begin to spend time with him in his word, and if you would like for us to just help you along this journey, because it's a journey, it's a walk, and we learned last week, your inner court, the people you have around uh, around you, really, is, it, they help influence you. And we want to be that influence for you. We want to walk with you. We want to give you the tools necessary to walk this life out. Um, just type in the comments, rededication, or feel free to message us. We'll put up um, our number. You can text us. Um, rededication. That's all that you you know want to say. We'll we'll get in touch with you. Um, but I believe that today hearts were renewed. Yes. I believe someone received um, God yes. at, at, again and said, you know, I'm doing this again with a, a new perspective. Yes. And Lord, I just thank you right now for what you did. I thank you for just showing how much yes. you love us to come down and and to sit with us today. God loves you that much. Yes. And if you don't know his love, if you don't know him that way, I'm telling you, salvation it is right here. All you can, all you have to do is say, God, I, re I realize that I'm a sinner and that I need you. If you profess that today and say, but I, I declare that you are my Savior. I receive you as my Savior. And from here on out, I will walk this life out according to your word. If you just believe that, confess that, you receive salvation. And if that's something that you would like for us to just partner with you and help you with, just type in the comments, salvation, message, or text us. We're, we're, we have leaders who are here willing to pray with you and walk with you. And maybe it's just prayer that you need. You say, hey, you know, I, I don't know what's going on in my soul. I don't know what I'm uncertain. There's unknown. There's a, a things that I just need someone to pray for me. Like, whatever it is, just say prayer. And we will pray for you. We have a prayer team yeah. that is praying already for yeah. the people who is watching and that's connected to this ministry. But if you want us to touch base with you personally, just type in the comments prayer. And if there's anyone here, too, that needs prayer, we I, I know we come in here and we have um, the live going on, but we never know where anyone is at. And I don't care if you're a leader. We all have a life. We all have a circumstance, and I just feel led right now. If you need prayer, I want you to come up right now because um, I want to pray for you. It doesn't have to be something even tragic or terrible. It's just like, you know what, I, I just need to be encouraged right here. I just I just need a word whispered to me. I just need, I just need words. And that's what it is. Sometimes we need someone to speak life into us. So if that's you right now and you want prayer, um, feel free to um, walk up. We want to pray with you. 
Okay. And so as we pray for those here, we just want to um, just, I'll just dismiss online. We love you. We're speaking just prosperity and peace over you right now. I'm telling you, God, you are, he's already giving you the peace tap into it. He's giving you guidance. He's giving you strength. Just connect with him and his word. Here at Every Walk of Life, Jesus is Lord. It's about where you're going and not where you've been.